where visionaries, entrepreneurs, and artists dream, transform, and create. Ray TV. You are listening to Miracle Moment, and I am your host, Ray Ireland. This is where trailblazing, truth-telling, provocative, and successful entrepreneurs and creatives from around the globe share their number one miracle moment that changed everything, pointing them in the direction of igniting epic soul alignment in their life and business. These renegade souls will show you the the behind-the-scenes, real-life magic on how to create a world-class lifestyle of true success. I am so glad you're tuning in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode on Miracle Moment. We are here with Aisha today and so excited because as we were talking, Aisha is an incredible astrologer. She's a business oracle, wealth energetics coach, and she also is the same human design as I am. (laughs) So I'm super excited to have her here. So we're both projectors, one, three. So this is going to be an interesting conversation. I can already feel because of her background, what she's up to in the world. And, you know, especially with just the, the women that have been coming onto the show lately, like there's, there's so much power that I think women are experiencing in the world. And part of the projector medicine is also in kind of slowing down, softening, and like really like listening and doing things in a bit of a different way. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to be very curious to hear how that has influenced your experience of miracles as you've, you know, grown your business and been a spiritual entrepreneur. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Ray. And it's no surprise that you would attract powerful women onto your podcast because you are such a powerful woman as well. And I love your work. So thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to kind of let you take the mic to get started to just introduce yourself to our audience. So you want to give them just a little bit about your story and what what got you to where you are now? And also maybe like, what is something that's really exciting and kind of new and fresh that you're looking Mm -hmm. forward to and creating right now? Yes. So ah, thank you so much for having me. So happy to be here. So I live on the West coast of Canada in British Columbia. I live by the water, by the ocean here. And my life's work and deepest passion is astrology. So I began studying astrology at the age of 14. And I'm about to turn 33. So I've spent more of my life with astrology than without astrology. I began studying astrology at age 14 during a really hard time. Well, really my whole childhood and teen years were really challenging. I experienced a lot of having to process uh, dark energies, intergenerational traumas, and a lot of instability in my childhood. So I felt very alone. Uh, We moved around a lot and I was often pulled out of school and didn't have a lot of friends. And I felt very confused about life. And also at the time, of course, I wasn't aware that I was a projector, right? So already we have that that energy of, of being different than the majority of other people around us. So I felt very lost. I felt alone. I felt kind of in a a way abandoned by life. I felt like, oh, I'm just kind of here in the darkness and and no one's going to no one's going to come help me. We experienced poverty, um, going to the food bank and having our lights cut out and things like that. It just felt like the world was not a nice place. And when I discovered astrology at age 14, just online, somehow just cruising the interwebs when I'm like 14 years old. And I found this article that was about my sun sign Aquarius. And this article just knew me. You know, I felt for the first time in my whole life, I felt seen. And it was so strange because there was no one there on the other side. It was just a web page, right? But I felt so seen. I could just, it was the resonance of truth was shattering to me. I can still remember that exact moment. And since then, astrology had been a really, really amazing, I would say, ally, guide, friends, language that I communicate to the universe to and from, and this navigational system that was really helping me make sense of things, which otherwise were very, very challenging to make sense of. It helped me realize that there is a divine order to this world, that spirit does have my back even through the hardest experiences, and that it was always written in my chart to have to evolve through certain challenging experiences, uh, traumas, and things like that. 
So fast forward, doo -doo 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 -doo. I uh, dropped out of school at age 15. So shortly, shortly after discovering astrology, I'm like, I'm out of here. Like I'm going to go experience, experience the world. I left home and it was a lot of rocky times, a lot of things around scarcity, financial scarcity, like living in, in true financial scarcity where there is, there is no backup plan. And through that journey, I did a lot of traveling. I tried a lot of different industries working in the service industry. I worked as an exotic dancer for a little while. So a lot of trying to find myself and trying to keep myself okay and keep myself safe through the journey and so many wonderful miracle moments actually throughout the entire path, as well as really challenging ones. I came to the point of an as projector for your audience members who maybe aren't aware our strategy is to wait for the invitation so i didn't know about this and i've been studying astrology for close to 20 years but human design i'm newer to that world so i didn't know about this but at some point i was invited to do a paid reading for someone and then it just kind of from there went word of mouth two more paid readings three more two more every time i did one like it was like a web that was being woven um, every time it would branch out into more before I had any social media presence, any website or ever spoke about it to anyone. So when it came time to start my business in March of 2020, when I was 30 years old, I instantly, I, actually I was 31 years old, uh, there's no way for me to see business except through the lens of astrology, because from the ages of 14 to now I'm 32, mm -hmm that living with astrology so deeply ingrained into like the cells of my being, I could only see business through that lens. And I created uh, some really beautiful success in quite a short period of time. And then that moved me into the space of helping entrepreneurs and conscious CEOs use astrology for divine timing, for living their blueprint, and for basically this new paradigm of business that's emerging of people literally getting paid to be yourself and to do your true work in the world to market authentically. So yeah, so grateful to be here, sitting here, meeting other amazing mm. entrepreneurs like yourself, because this is to me a really big part of the age of Aquarius and the new world that's emerging is the people being empowered financially to continue doing their purpose work. So we actually receive prosperity as we get better and better at our medicine, instead of doing jobs that we don't care about or like. Mm -hmm. Yes to that. Yes to that. And I think that it really is like the age of Aquarius that we're stepping mm -hmm. into in terms of like, just I feel like freedom, it's like taking these like reins off and like these chains that were like, mm -hmm. you have to do X, Y, Z to create safety for yourself first yeah. and foremost, let alone even talk about thriving. Like that's mm -hmm. not even a conversation to be had. And the, there's still so many programs laid out. So every time that I hear someone like really declaring that future that we are co-creating together, I'm, it's mm -hmm. just like, let me just highlight that. And I want that to like really land for like everyone that's listening mm -hmm. that like, this is possible if we create it and if we want it. And yeah. I think, you know, it's not too hard to talk with a few people and be like, oh yeah, we do want this. Yeah. I think oh, we, we, we are definitely all craving that, mm -hmm. um, that level of just freedom and sovereignty and, and, and really thriving, thriving in who we are and being seen and heard and appreciated for who we are as a soul brought here on this planet at this time for this Absolutely. reason. Absolutely. Yeah, we all have such powerful medicine. And when we really start to see our desires as clues and indications of where we're to actually go next, and we give ourselves to the path that was it's encoded within our blueprint, whether it's our human design chart or astrology chart, they actually work really well together. And of course, mm. part of human design is based on astrological placements. But, you know, I came from a background where I did not have a lot of privilege. I'm a woman of color. I grew up in poverty and then I dropped out of school. So I really did take on the program that I was told, if you drop out of school, you're never going to get a good job. So I said, okay, then I guess I'll never have a good job. And I mm. did many things that I really, the, doing the things I had to do, things that were hard on my body. I didn't realize that I'm a projector. I'm not here to do, 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 but I'm working like three jobs, working on my feet all day. And I felt that I was just lucky to have a job that I didn't hate. And of course there is the place for gratitude that I had these opportunities and I had a very a lot of adventurous experiences and things that happened. But when we really enter the world of 
no, we are all like literally walking miracles. We're like mythological creatures. Like look at us, human beings are yeah. miraculous. It's, it's amazing the, the way that we've developed and evolved. And we have so much available at our fingertips as a collective and as individuals. We have talents, we have the internet, we have really interesting uh, methods of exchange. We have energy work. We have the technology, the intelligence to really create heaven on earth. We're just mm. kind of as a collective, there's just a lot of conflicted um, way that we focus our attention and energy so but to me that's a really big part of the age of aquarius and us reclaiming wealth and financial power through not through sacrifice but through actually mm. become like self-actualization that's mm. what i'm here for and i lived a lot of my life um feeling that money was the answer to every problem that's what it seemed like with my parents with my family with my friends who are a lot of broke artists and like yeah it's like dancers. oh we don't well if we don't have that then if we just have this then like everything else will be fine too yes yeah yeah, yeah. i so totally just... can relate growing up as a dancer and mm. and the the whole struggling artist thing that was yeah. that was like just yeah, this is what it is. This is how yeah. it's going to be. And it's like, well, I feel like I have all these problems, but yeah, if I just have money, then that would solve everything. Yep. It's like, yeah. So you just not. do whatever to get it. And that's just normal. You know, it's very mm -hmm. normalized that we, we don't like our work. So it's, I, I am so grateful every day because I went from most of my life feeling like I'll never have a good job. It's, you know, that just, that's the choice that happened when I chose to left home, leave home to literally there's no job that is more right for me than what I'm doing. There's no job that I would want to do other than what I'm doing now. So it makes me feel very grateful and humbled. And it's also so important for me to share that message with other people, because if you, we tend to think that will happen for other people, but not ourselves. But the truth is it can happen for every single person just in alignment with their unique blueprint and their unique path. But everyone's path, I believe has the same potential for glory and satisfaction and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So in this journey that you've been on, is there a specific moment that, you know, stands out to you as a time where it was like, wow, this was the miracle that happened. This was the thing that just really changed everything. I would love to hear what mm. that was for you and why it's so important. I, it's, it's challenging to answer that question because I believe life is, is really just this moving miracle. And I'm sure that you, you, totally. you feel that as well, but one moment does come to mind. And that is, I believe it was 2015. It was after I was in Costa Rica, I traveled there with a ex partner and that relationship was just your, your classic train wreck <laughs> drama, triangle, victim, perpetrator games, toxic dynamics, um, just really, really, really toxic train wreck relationship mm. where my self-esteem was rock bottom. We're using substances together on the regular and really just unhealthy in, in every way. Like I felt that mm -hmm. I, I, the pendulum was just swinging in the, the direction of destruction. I really found someone who was like mm -hmm. a match for my <laughs> destructive tendencies mm -hmm. in a way that is not, not romantic, um, though it might, might have seemed so at the time. And that relationship ended horrifically. And uh, we were traveling in Costa Rica. I moved into a house um, to get space from that person. And I found another place to stay because I was wanting to stay there for a little while. And three days later, that house got broken into and robbed. So just after this like horrific uh, ending of like long overdue, we were one of those couples, you know, that's just always fighting. It's just like, oh my God, this is a disaster. Um, and then, yeah, I left three days later new place is broken into my computer is gone my camera my phone um, everything but everything. my passport which if you're wondering where's a safe place to keep your passport put on the inside pocket of a denim jacket and hang that up on the on the wall because that was the only thing that didn't get stolen and i i had no music to listen to i i was really just in this very raw my nervous system was was completely haywire all this unprocessed trauma was coming up and it really was a rock bottom time for me, like drinking gin for breakfast kind of thing, like rock mm -hmm. bottom, really the worst of, of uh, my myself was coming through. And I was in my, I can't remember the exact age, I was in my mid twenties feeling like, oh, like, you know, my youth is behind me. Um, I, I've wasted my potential. I've wasted all this time. Uh, there's no turning back. I left that town and I really surrendered to spirit. And as soon as that happened, 
miraculous dominoes just started to fall. So from just meeting the right person at the right time, hearing the right piece of information at the right time, to being put up for free in a five-star hotel for seven nights with all my own space, everything I needed to heal was literally granted to me on a silver platter. As soon as I let go of control, surrendered and left, left that place that I was in to go to a different town in Costa Rica. And I ended up have finding landing a work exchange position at a beautiful spiritual community where I got to wake up at sunrise with the howler monkeys over my tent and do yoga in the mornings. And it was just before my birthday that I had had left that whole situation. And uh, the first night that I was at this community, I just managed to get there through this like domino effect, like I mentioned, like one domino to another, to another, hearing this piece of news, do, 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 everything connecting in this divine way to me being there. And the very first night, I didn't know anyone there. And there was a workshop called Five Rhythms Dance, which is like a dance workshop with, yeah, invo involving the elements. Yeah, I love they, Five Rhythms. So yeah. good. And they lead you through like the different, um, the qualities mm. of the elements and there's music. And for the first time in my life, I just shattered so many restrictions around my body. And I was literally dancing to the trees and the forest and I felt this really amazing like I'd cried so much in the weeks before and in that moment I just felt like I'm free and I'm dancing for God and, I, and I'm being I'm just held in this safe space and shortly after that a few days later I was in the kitchen where I worked so I was in this work exchange I was working in the kitchen just cutting like so many potatoes just potatoes carrots just cutting 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 and I mentioned to the girl who was working with me that um yeah my birthday was coming up it's normally a really tender time for me but I'm so glad I'm here and she asked me what day was my birthday and I told her it was February 7th and then she let me know that that was the day of the ayahuasca ceremony so I all of a sudden was taken on this magic carpet ride to my first ayahuasca ceremony on my birthday and you know if it wasn't for that period of time I would not be here now so mm. that's yeah that's my miracle mm. moment that I want to share <laughs> so good oh I love it yeah I just uh was like with you in that whole journey of <laughs> the howler monkeys and just dancing <laughs> with the trees and the the surprise I invite which seems to be the way you know that's the way it goes. That's the way. Sure. That's, how, yeah. that's how it happens. Um, <laughs> and I just, I love it because like the beginning of the miracle moment and a part of, you know, what I want to do with this, with this podcast and why we have these conversations is because I think sometimes we get into the human, which is like mm -hmm. maybe outside and had, has sometimes forgotten that the everyday life is a miracle. Mm -hmm. And it can be like, sometimes if we're in a funk or things aren't working and you're like looking around and it's like, where's my freaking miracle? <laughs> I need a miracle now. And the coolest part is when I'm talking to women like yourself, like super powerful, super successful, like in your flow, like not just successful in money, like, yeah, you're making really great money and like, you love what you do. Mm -hmm. And the coolest thing is that the miracle moment are these like really tough challenges, these like really tough times. And so it's just such a good reframe to remember that not only is the everyday a miracle, but literally the times where you're like, what the heck is going on? Why am yep. I here? Like that is your miracle. And at least, you know, if you're listening to this, if you're in a place of like kind of questioning where, when's your miracle coming or where's my miracle? It's like, just listen to these voices, like listen to my voice, listen to Aisha's voice as if it's your own future self mm. speaking to you now mm. and reminding yourself like, this is a miracle in the making right now, girl. Yes. Like it's Absolutely. here. <laughs> yep. Those rock bottom times, they really, you know, there was times I felt like I was just alone in a room with myself. That's what mm -hmm. it brings you down to. But what can you find there except for a miracle? That's that's what it is uh, when you're really connecting with yourself on those raw levels and you let yourself feel the sensations of what it's like to be there. And I used to 
think about, you know, what did I do to deserve this? Why do bad things happen to me? And like that kind of um, perspective. And now I've really come to see that it was because I needed to become this badass. That's it. It's not because I deserved it. It's not because sure there's karmic imprints. That's a whole, that's a whole other thing, but it's mm -hmm. not as simplified as people think like I did something bad. Now something bad's happening to me. It's not like that. It's not about what you deserve or what you're, what is you're worthy of experiencing, but it is about what you're meant to be initiated into. And oftentimes mm. that's because we're here to show other people the way through, or we're here to offer that guidance and turn that into medicine. And that's like the most beautiful thing we can do with our shadow experiences, in my opinion, obviously not, not everyone's here to be a healer. Some people are here to express through art. Some people are here to express through mm. a variety of other languages, but I think it's the most beautiful alchemy to take those shadow experiences and turn them into magic somehow. Totally. And we're only delivered like the size cup that we're, that we can actually take that we're yeah. truly capable of. And sometimes like in those moments, it can feel like, wait, this is like way more, like I am not strong enough for this, mm -hmm. but the universe like knows the universe yep. <laughs> knows us so well. And I think even our own souls know us so well. Mm -hmm. And, and we set ourselves up to receive that sort of medicine, that sort of miracle. And so even if it feels stronger or more intense, like it is exactly what you need to stand up and become that badass, like you said. Yeah. Um, it's it's really everything. So I just love that story. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. Mm, thank you so much. Yeah. So I'm curious, like um, I want to kind of tie this into our, the human design projector <laughs> piece. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, this is so interesting that we have, we share the same one. And I know a lot of, um, a lot of people that listen to my stuff and a lot of clients, they're also projectors. There's that, you know, we, yeah. we tend to like find each other and we're like, what are you doing? Because totally. <laughs> this is, we're clearly doing something different than everyone else. So I'm curious, like how has maybe like that experience of your miracle moment, how do you feel like you were able to move through it specifically because you're a projector? Like, so this is really like speaking to the projectors that are maybe listening to us. What would be some things, some pieces of wisdom or like insight that you would want to share um, while they're going through their own journeys of miracles and rock mm. bottoms and all of that in their soul evolution? Mm. So at the time that this happened in 2015, I actually was not aware that I'm a projector. So there's definitely mm -hmm. some things that I would wish that I did know at that time, like not spending any of my precious energy trying to be accepted by others. That was a place where I was spending energy because I desired to feel safe. I desired to feel different, like, you know, something other than the pain that I was feeling. And I did come outside of myself a lot in order to try to be accepted into certain groups and realizing, okay, one thing that I, a deep belief that I hold is that in our astrology chart, our human design chart, any, any system that we're working with, we chose all those placements. So sometimes we can have this perspective of, oh, why did I get this one? As if it's like a roll of a dice or something like that. It's not every choice on those charts was made by our soul for a specific purpose. When we just carry that belief, we can just stop spending any time wondering, oh, why did I get, why did I get this? This is so unlucky or something like that. Yes. So with that belief being held within me, I now understand that a lot of the pain I experienced in exactly that period of time was me coming outside of myself and my own energy in order to be accepted into groups of people or just like, I wanted to change my life. I wanted to change. And I felt like it came from other groups that were doing things that I like, liked to, wanted to be a part of. And now as a projector, that's really taking the effort and is devoted to living my design. That means being in my genius and allowing invitations to come to me because our strategy is to wait for the invitation. Mm -hmm. So my biggest piece of advice is really, it's all about the basics in human design. It's all about if when you really understand the authority, your profile lines and your type, it can take years to fully embody that because we can understand mm -hmm. it on a conceptual level. So it's these little choices of like, have I received the invitation? Where is the invitation? Because our energy as projectors, any non-sacral beings like manifestors, reflectors, our energy is very, very, very precious. Actually, all types, our energy is very precious. So where we're investing that is where we're going to be 
we'll be cultivating and nourishing more of that type of energy. So for myself, if I could go back to that period of time and give myself advice, it would be just stay in your own aura, <laughs> stay in your mm -hmm. own energy, do your thing. And your aura will attract the aligned invitations to you instead of going outside of myself to invite myself places or, or get invitations in that way. Oh, yes. I love that. I love that so much. And I can definitely relate just, and it's, there's such a flow, you know, hmm. when you are using your strategy that is connected to your human design or astrology, yet, like you said, any system, but like learn your own system. So that way you can understand what your strategies are and you can kind of like lean back a bit. Like that was my experience. Once I started learning more, I was like, oh, I can just like be me. Like, let me just whew, let me go, yes. relax a little, <laughs> like, chill out, breathe, have a sip of water. It's going to yep. be fine. Um, so I love, I love the story. And, and I think it's such a powerful reminder. Um, that's definitely what I would be saying to, to my younger self too, is like mm -hmm. the invitation is coming. It's, yep. it's here yes. for you. It's, it's on its way. It's in the mail. Like just yeah. have a cup of tea while it comes. Don't freak Absolutely. out. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. The invitation is coming and also like being discerning with our energy and mm -hmm. choosing to spend time with people who see us on a deep level and see who we really are and our real gifts. Because as projectors, we're here to share what we see. We're not, we're not here to do a lot. We're here to actually share what we see. So when someone mm -hmm. recognizes our true vision, then those are places that we want to be or spend our time and people to spend our time with. <laughs> yes. yes, so good. So how can people stay in touch with you and, and find you? So I'm very active on Instagram. I share all my astrology work on there. I create horoscopes for the new and full moon. And my, my greatest passion is using astrology, our energetic blueprint, print in alignment with business because business is the vehicle of our medicine and that's how we empower our lives and create really big ripples of change in this world through being resourced for our gifts so you can find a lot of my astrology insights as well as business and wealth energetic insight on instagram i have lots of igtvs on there and i also have a freebie which is my astrology guide so this freebie has my interpretations and breakdowns of the signs the houses planets asteroids aspects and it's very very detailed and comprehensive wow. so i created that as the resource that i wish i had when i was decoding my chart so it's not meant to be read only once you're meant to have it open when you're looking at your own chart and when you're working with astrology and, and just kind of breaking it down because astrology is a language that is like a lifelong relationship. So sometimes people start getting into it, um, can become a little bit overwhelmed with how much information there is or how foreign their chart looks, because it really is another language. So I created this as kind of a cross-reference resource. And my, my favorite people to serve is entrepreneurs, artists, mystics, healers, and creatives, because even if you're not as much of an astrology nerd as me, weaving this knowledge into the way that you market and create offers, it's just going to feel like coming home to yourself. Because as I'm sure you also know, like marketing and selling is about helping our soul line clients just recognize us. It's not about mm. convincing anyone. It's about shining our unique essence, like exactly what you said, just being yourself and then weaving in strategy as like mm -hmm. just the, mm, just the beautiful finishing touch on the things that we're offering. So those are my passions really is astrology and, and strategy. I'm a, I'm a big, big on strategy. <laughs> strategy turns me on. I'm like, uh, yeah. it's like a strategy, astrology yes. strategy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yes, that, yeah, that, that sums me up. And a lot of people that come into my world are not even looking for an astrologer or don't even realize that astrology is something they want in their lives. But when we apply it to business, like, you know, that's how I've created almost half a million dollars in revenue last year uh, in 2021, which was my second year in business. And these kinds of results are like, they just pop up more and more and more and more. I'm sure mm. you know what I mean. The more that we are, the more that individuals are accessing these incredible results and incredible flow and magnetism in business, we're unlocking that template for other people as well. And like just bringing the astrology into it, it's giving divine timing. It's a way to be in communion with your higher self and the universe. And that just brings clarity. It's an endless fountain of inspiration. And yeah, obviously huge passion of mine. I can talk about it for like three hours. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. Yeah. It's, it's getting into that. The, the way that I like to say is like the miracle flow consciousness mm -hmm. and yep. it's, 
it's here for us. So why not? Why not play with it? Why not have our best lives doing it and Absolutely. enjoy the people that we're co-creating with and um, serving, you know, and working with. Mm. So I love it. Thank you so much for joining. This has been such a gift, such a beautiful conversation. I feel like we could just stay on here for hours. <laughs> So maybe I'll have to have you back and we can yes. dive more into this. Um, and thank you everyone who has been listening to this episode. Um, I hope that you can just, you know, take one piece, take one thing that stuck with you and sit with it, let it marinate and see how it affects just your day and watch that kind of ripple out. So mm -hmm. thank you all so much and we'll see you next time. Adios. Thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet so you can stay up to date for new episodes coming out soon. And remember to witness and acknowledge the 